Here we have a Leak Mono 0.1 preamplifier which came out of the cabinet that you saw with the TL10 power amplifier. This one was called the 0.1 because of 0.1% harmonic distortion and Harold Leak was the first guy to ever reach them kind of numbers and he did it for the scientific lab and uh, ended up in the hi-fi market in the 1950s. This one uses a twin EF86 valve design. Clive did a lot of the work earlier with the capacitors being replaced for polypropylene and uh, some people are happy about that, some people are not for the audio reasons. Later on I'm going to get Clive to explain the work that was done on this amplifier. Up until then we've got Phil Moss going through the circuit diagram to give you a quick run through. Right, this is the preamp. So again they have used two EF86s, one of them trio connected on the output. It has to accommodate a wide range of inputs and we're going back to the days because this is an old design where if you went to turntable input there wasn't one standard. Later of course we had RIAA, Recording Institute of America Association also known as British Microgroove characteristic but basically we copied the American. We had all our own like FFRR and such things um, Calaro LP. So we have several inputs there. The tuner goes straight in and we will find that if we go across to the compensation for the tuner, um, basically all we have got is gain reduction because it's a relatively high level signal and you do not need all the gain from a high gain valve like an EF86. The other inputs required a lot more amplification but they also required frequency compensation and that is why you have the different values of capacitor you then have the resistor which sets the gain and they vary because the different outputs from the different record standards and the capacitor over gives the reduction in gain with increasing frequency so the switching is a bit complex the input valve will be designed for minimum noise or close to it. So we have a mega ohm in the screen and 220k in the anode, approximately a 5 to 1 ratio. Um, for maximum signal to noise, you would actually have a 10 to 1 ratio, i.e. that would be 2.2 megs. You lose gain doing that though. Um, quite a big the coupling capacitor considering the value of the series resistor. We then move on through the capacitor, that's the feedback to the switch. We then go into the Baxendall, which I've explained separately elsewhere. Baxendall active bass and treble control. Um, with as is typical of the Baxendall, you need a special pot with an earth tap on it part way along. That's an awkward one if you have to replace it. Quite often the circuit will work um, without having that tap, but sometimes it goes unstable. Um, there's not a lot else to say. The main switch was incorporated into the preamp so you could put the uh, power amplifier out of sight somewhere. And it's on the back of the volume control as is usual and is gang to it. Down here we simply have a diagram showing the pin to pin connection of the octal umbilical cord between the two units. Um, with the exception of the signal lead which is coax, the others aren't. Uh, it's just a straightforward connection between the units. You probably can't see the detail of this but then you wouldn't learn very much from doing so. And then the output there, there is a separate one that is on a jack socket uh, for connection to something else, another amplifier other than the leak or possibly to a tape recorder.